as I was thinking about the Percy Jackson musical in preparation of my video yesterday, it got me thinking about what makes a good adaptation. Why is it that the Percy Jackson movie wasn't a good adaptation, whereas the musical was? Okay, well, that question's actually pretty easy to answer, but it did get me thinking about what makes a good adaptation. So, in this video, I am going to lay out three rules that I feel people need to follow if they are going to set out to make an adaptation of something. For each rule, I will talk about an adaptation that I feel didn't follow this rule very well, and briefly say why the Percy Jackson musical does. Number one, tell the same story. To me, this one does seem the most obvious, and yet it is very much where the Percy Jackson movie falls short. If you're going to make an adaptation from one medium to another, you need to tell the same basic story. Now, obviously, as I mentioned last year, some changes do need to be made because otherwise there's really no point in making this particular adaptation. But these changes need to be bettering the story or better adapting it to whatever media you're trying to adapt it to. The Percy Jackson movie fails miserably at this. They changed who the main villain was, completely getting rid of any possibility of sequels, despite them trying to make a sequel. They changed the personalities of some of the main characters, and they changed the ages of the main characters as well, which is a huge plot point in the book, that they just completely and utterly changed for the movie. The story of the movie was completely unrecognizable from the story of the book. The musical, on the other hand, told basically the same story, and any of the changes that were made, and there were some, were made to more easily adapt it from a book into a musical. Number two, keep the same themes and tone. I think part of what makes a good adaptation is being able to hold on to the same themes and tone from the original source material. That doesn't inherently mean that darker takes on stories are bad, but it is a difficult line to walk. And I would make the argument that if you take it too far, like taking a children's book and turning it into a dark and gritty story, that's more a reimagining of the original story than an adaptation. I think an adaptation that in some way failed in this situation is the series of unfortunate events movie. And I'm specifically focusing on tone as opposed to themes here, just because that's easier to talk about. While I think for the most part the overall tone is good, where the movie fails is its portrayal of its villains. In the books, Count Olaf and his theater troupe are terrifying. In the movie, not so much. They focus a little bit too much on comedy. Now, I do think that it is possible to mix some humor in with these characters. I would even say that there are definitely humorous moments in the books as well. But the movie leaned way too much on comedy with them, and it removes a lot of the threat that permeates throughout the books. That does in some way affect the tone, because Count Olaf and his troupe are such a big part of the books, and they literally affect everything that happens. Percy Jackson Musical, on the other hand, does a great job of transferring the tone of the book into the musical, even down to having a very similar sense of humor, which is not an easy thing to do when you're taking a book that's told from a first-person perspective and transferring it into a musical. And number three, it should be enjoyable and understandable for everyone. At the end of the day, while you obviously want your adaptation to be enjoyed by those who like the original source material, what your adaptation should be is enjoyable to everyone, regardless of if they know the original source material. And it should make sense. One of the series that has some problems with this is the Harry Potter series. I've read a few lists about plot holes in movies, and while I do think some of the ones that I've read include plot holes from people who just kind of weren't paying attention during the movie, I think the ones that talk about Harry Potter do have some merit. But if you go to the comments, a lot of people in defense of them just say, well, let's explain in the book, just go read them. Here's the thing, though. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to read the original book or watch the original movie or TV show or musical or what have you to enjoy the adaptation. It's not a quiz that you need to study for, it's a piece of entertainment. This criteria is usually difficult for me to judge just because in many cases when I watch an adaptation I do know the original source material. So while it makes sense to me and I think it does a good job with this, I do know the original source and so it is difficult for me to separate my knowledge of that from what I am watching or reading. However, with the Percy Jackson musical, I don't have to rely on my slightly biased views, because Abby has now seen the musical and they haven't read the original book, and they very much enjoy the musical and understand what's happening. So check mark for that for the musical as well. Obviously there are some nuances when it comes to creating anything, even adaptations. There are other things that can be done to help or hinder your final product. But I do truly believe that if you can at least follow these three rules, you will be successful in making a good adaptation. So, 
you know, if, if any of you are planning on writing an adaptation of something, I hope this helps. So with all of that being said, to my friends and fellow Betsy's, I will see all of you tomorrow.